In this video, I'll show you how to construct the transfer fork. Now again, part of the challenge is determining what, how to start your sketch. So I'm going to start on the end because it's got that circular cut. I usually, I tend to, oops, I tend to key on that. Now it's kind of a complicated sketch, so you can, you can simplify it and make it into two sketches instead of trying to do too much in the first sketch, but whatever works for you. Uh, the challenge isn't the sketching, it's getting all the constraints right. So that's the general shape. Yeah, I'm going to make it symmetrical around origin in that direction. And because you know you're going to have that, that semicircle cut out, I'm going to go ahead and dimension to that origin. And that's going to be equal to the distance where that center line of that semicircle is going to be. And that's not critical, just the way I'm deciding to do it. Now these two, you have to make sure you dimension both of these so that it's accurately controlled. Uh, again, the software doesn't know that this part's supposed to be symmetrical. You're going to have to make that clear with the way that you dimension it. Now, same situation here. The slot, which is three quarter wide, it needs to be symmetrical about the origin. So just add a dimension. Since that's three quarter, this is going to be three eighths. And we'll do the same thing with these pieces here. Each one of these is, let's try that again. Each one of these is a half of an inch. And the total height is 3.5. And again, so you'll have to dimension that to, sh to uh, create the accurate size and shape of it. Still got some blue here, and uh, that's because of these lines here. I don't have any control over the length of those yet, and it is the same as this dimension. But again, you're going to have to make that obvious with the dimensions. And now everything's black, so I'm just going to stop here. You can do the cutout, but I'm just going to make that a second step. Okay, so what I'll do is actually extrude this shape the full length of the part which is five inches there's actually two sections that look the same as this so you could draw one of them that's three quarter thick and mirror it you could draw it and draw the pieces that connect it or whatever i think i kind of think the easiest way is just to extrude this whole thing and that is five inches thick and let's do that circular cut out there with a new sketch Trim away what I don't need. And then I'll cut out that piece. Okay, so one of the big things we have to do is remove a lot of material on here. So we'll just do a sketch on that face. And remember, you can your sketch can exceed the boundaries of that face because you've really selected the plane that that face lies on. So see my sketch, it's gonna look something like that. Make sure you dimension it. do a 
extrude cut and remove all that material. And we need to do something similar up here. You've also got a rectangular cutout on that top section. You'll notice I use the rectangle tool fairly often. It's a very efficient way to sketch as opposed to drawing with lines, but you can certainly do it with the line tool as well. And again, I'll just extrude cut that out. And it doesn't matter about how far you go as long as you go through the part. And what we've got left is those semicircular pieces that go up on there. So I'll do a new sketch on that face. And if you use a little bit of care, you'll identify the midpoint in that line. And all you have to do is click on the end point of there. And we'll need to trim that. In half. Now you can't put the, there's also a hole in there, but you can't put that hole in there and that semicircle, the positive s space in the same step. So first I'll extrude that. And that should be 0.75. Oops, I'm sorry, that's point. And let me go ahead and show you how to do the mirror tool while we're at it. So we need to do the same thing over here. This isn't that difficult of a piece to make, but this is a good opportunity to try that out. So I'll come up here and go to Reference Geometry Plane. And the software will be looking for references. So if I click on this surface, then it tries to give me some options for what I can do. I'll click on that surface you'll see it automatically figures out that I, what I wanted was a mid-plane. Now I could also, I could do something different if I want, but it establishes because I clicked on those two surfaces. It's giving me a mid-plane, which is exactly what I want. And about that mid-plane, then I will do the mirror. So go to mirror. It's going to ask you for the mirror face plane. So choose the plane. Don't choose the, what you want to mirror yet. You want to choose the plane there. So I'll choose that one and then click on the feature that you want to mirror and the feature I want to mirror is that and you'll see it gives me like a preview of it. So again this isn't a really complicated piece but it's a good time to practice. And now to turn on that plane you can either come over here to your part tree right click and turn off the eye or you can actually let's turn that back on. You can actually come over here just to the plane but you have to make sure right click on the plane and likewise turn that off and all we got left to do is punch that hole in there and if you bring your cursor out to the outside don't click it to the outside of the circle it'll highlight the midpoint and then you can easily click on the midpoint and that is a half inch diameter finish the sketch extrude cut and I want to go all the way through everything and there's our transfer fork save that and we put it on the drawing sheet Okay, so now determining what your front view should be. Now this over here, your um, view palette, it shows you that as the front view. That's not a great front view, partly because you're going to get views that look like this. Um, that does show a lot of information about the part. Uh, just the orientation is a little odd when you see a top view that's kind of balanced like that. So I think a bet there's a better front view. Um, that one would be okay. Let's just look at our options here. Uh, my point is you don't have to settle for what the software thinks is a front view. Click on your view palette. I actually think this is a better 
front view. Gives you much more balance in terms of presenting it. Now scale wise, we're on a B size paper, which is what we want. We may want to try a different scale. Let's just see what the different scales look like. So if you go to custom scale, it's half scale now. If you scroll up, you can see you can go to full scale. And that's just too large, unfortunately. So we'll just stick with the half scale. And we also want to turn on our hidden lines. And we'll be done with that. Now it does bring along with it the hidden lines on that, but just click on that view and you can turn off the hidden lines for the ISO view. We'll add an annotation. We'll add our center lines. We'll need a center mark for that. And we'll add our center lines. Again, the easiest way to do that is just come over here and choose auto insert and then just click on the views and it'll put your center lines on there for you. We have something here that we want to correct. Notice what happened when I put those center lines on there is, let me just erase that for now. See that line? That represents the tangent line that would be where that arc meets that straight line. So you see that point? So the software identifies that as an actual physical line. But we want to delete that. So if you right click it, and you can just come up here where it says hide and show edges, you can just hide that. Right click it, hide it. Okay, um, now what you're seeing here, that dashed line is actually the tangent line on the other side. If you try to hide that, I don't think it'll let you hide that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you can't hide that, I don't believe. What it does is it show it, it toggles from hide to show on those. So let's just see what our center lines are going to look like now. We'll just manually put them on there. So that's the top of the circle. That's that line. And that's the bottom of the circle. That's a little bit better. Okay, so then we just need to add all of our dimensions, fill out the title block, and I think we're good to go.